Hi everyone, welcome back to part two of my cargo trailer expansion. So now we've got the outside done, that's all in part one video. Now what are we going to do inside? Well, I'm pretty much going to keep the same basic layout as I had before. I like having the benches, uh, like the table, I like having the table and then the bed. Uh, we don't full time in this, so I could see maybe if you're full timing, always wanting a fixed bed. But I like a spot to go inside, play some cards, um, just get out of the weather, uh, not be outside all the time. And I just don't want a little bench. I'd like to be able to have uh, a few people in here and be comfortable. The layout that I'm going for is I'm probably going to put, I'd like to try to make, my goal here is to have all my water within the trailer. So my drain water, like my gray water tank, my fresh water, everything inside but for the sink I'm gonna be moving the sink over to this side so from the front I'm gonna move the sink right here and then I'm gonna have a little gray water tank right here in the co corner and then beside that I'm gonna have my fresh water tank again that 20 gallon fresh water and then to the right over here back there in front of the wheel well I'm gonna have uh, my 30 gallon water tank and then I'm gonna put my battery bank again back here and so that's going to be in both my benches. Now if you notice from this video, it's not really going to be a build video, how to do electrical, how to do insulation, that sort of stuff. If you want those kind of videos, just check out uh, my cargo trailer build playlist, the conversion playlist, because I go through those. Or you can buy my guide where I go through it step by step in there and have a few uh, tips things that I, I feel worked well for me. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to insulate this, then we're going to seal it all up. I'm going to use a little bit of that spray foam just around the windows, in any of the joints, tin tape the joints, and then we're going to throw our, our board on. So that's what we're going to do right now, get that set up. The only electrical I have coming through here is I'm going to have a little bit of, uh, for my marker lights, and I'm gonna put a light at the back here, but I'm gonna, I can do that after I've got my, my paneling up. So what I will do before I go and put my insulation and paneling up is I'm gonna put my two water fill connections. I'm gonna install those. So I'll get that installed and then uh, start with my insulation. Sure. I got the insulation in, but I just wanted to point this out first before you go and bury everything, you gotta get your wiring done. So again, I talk about a lot of this in my guide, but these are the connectors I use. It's uh, crimp shrink and glue. It just keeps everything nice and tight. So now I'll get that done up and then bury that in insulation. So your insulation's all done everywhere. And I really tried to put it in as tight as possible. I think that's a real key to this. So like even here where, where this channel is, I actually trimmed it out and slid it right into that channel. Same with back here around the window. I went all the way around the window. I drilled these holes to put spray foam in. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray foam it. Spray foam around the lights. All, any gaps, any little gaps or cracks I have. And then I'm going to put tin tape over all my joints. And that's to keep any air from hitting the outside wall. Uh, the warm air hitting the cold air or vice versa and causing condensation and sliding down and then causing mold down here. So I got my panels on. I just kind of fit them in. You can see the old panels here and then the new panels where I extended it. So now I've just started my cupboards again. I'm going to redo my cupboards obviously, bring them out a little further. I'm putting my sink over here. Just doing the back bed section right now. I still want the same style bed, you know, one that folds down. So I'm just trying to line them up here and then get it so it's all level right across. In here I'm going to run a water tank on both sides. That's why I've got the fill one fill here and then one fill over here. So I'm going to have a water tank here. I might run this one just summer and that one will be my winter tank or it might be like lake water and then good water. I don't know, we'll see, something like that. This is going to be my gray tank. So I wanted to keep everything within the trailer because of, uh, for freezing, obviously. I do a lot of winter camping, as you know. Also, if you notice with the floor, I went with a one-piece uh, one floor, so there's no seams. 
uh, the laminate that was in here before was always separating and then closing with the hot and cold like especially when you're winter camping it's freezing in here and then I turn on the heat warms it up it's just pretty natural it's hard to, to avoid so this is just a one piece floating vinyl floor it's quite thick and it's got a little bit of insulation underneath it so I just cut it out fit it all around here obviously that's where my hot water heater is going to go I'm also going to do something a little different with a hot water heater I'm going to put a little blast gate in there you know like you, you they use for dust collectors I close it off for winter time again so here's that damper that I'm going to be putting in here so it's all cast this is all cast aluminum and then it's got this gate here that, that you close and then it's got this this little thumb thumb wheel here that you close lock it and close is I'm trying to get the right location of my stove in relation to my countertop here so to do that I just took a plumb bob which is basically just a string I put it on the ceiling and added a weight to it and that way I can move around my center like where it's going to go into the pipe into the stove here I can move my stove around to find just the right location that I want once I've got that marked, I just marked on the ceiling that spot. And then that's where I'm going to go up through the ceiling. I'd highly recommend just buying the pipe from the Cubic Mini manufacturer. I love this double wall idea. Because what it's going to do is it's going to keep your soot and stuff going down inside your stove. Where at the same time, you're completely protected from uh, smoke coming inside the unit. And then it's got this nice insulated part to keep it nice and hot uh, as it's exiting outside. So I hope that all makes sense. So the step forward now, I know exactly where I'm going to come through my roof. I've got a five inch hole saw here. You're actually supposed to go a little bit wider, but my roof is steel. Like it's uh, not steel, it's aluminum roof. So it's not going to melt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a five inch hole through the, the aluminum roof. And then underneath where the insulation is, we're going to cut it back another inch. There's our seven inch hole here, five inch hole here for our insulated pipe. So now what I'm gonna do is I've got an, a ring of uh, high heat insulation that I'm gonna put in there. I've got the existing ring here that I cut out of the, the stuff that would just melt. And I'm gonna put in a ring of insulation in here that is uh, high heat vermiculite. And then that's going to just keep it all sealed because I don't want the hot air hitting this and forming condensation and then going down inside here. So what I'm going to do is put this on and then the plates, the cover plates, when I put those on, I'm going to seal them really well all the way around so that they uh, form an airtight barrier for allowing this hot air to hit this cold metal here. Again, we don't want condensation building in a mold later. Next up, I've got my brackets in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the boot roughly where it's going to go. And I'm going to mark around it. And then I'll put the silicone right on the inside of that line. And then also I flip it up and I put a little bit of high temp on that pipe. So we're all screwed down now all around here. Got a nice layer of caulking underneath it. Now I'm going to put a little bit of a layer on top of each one of these bolt heads and all along this seam just to make sure it's really well sealed. You can see the high temp uh, silicone in there. So that'll seal these two pipes together. Okay, so I got the stove roughly in the right place. There's the pipe going through the roof. Uh, what I'm going to do is, with this installation, I just want it fixed. I don't want to be removing caps and stuff, but I'm going to have it a little bit lower than it should be. I'll see how. I'm pretty sure it'll work fine. So the next step is we've got to slide this trim ring in here. That's just going to go on the bottom of this to make it look pretty. So we put that on. For got my pipe slid on you can see how it's got the two the, the inner and the outer so the inside one goes inside the stove the outside one goes around the outside of the collar here and then this here is gonna just sit on here sit on here for now and then we'll get this all set up so now we'll, what the process is is i'll get the pipe and i'll start putting it down from the top i want another one of these these insulated ones in the bottom here because I would like this nice and protected away from my cupboards here and stuff that's what I was thinking
So I'm just doing my electrical right now. Right here I'm going to put like an electrical panel with all my switches and stuff. So this is a tube that I've got going down. You can see it down below there. Just something to keep all the wires nice and neat coming up to the, to the panel here. Uh, just staying the countertop, still a little bit wet. But I'm just going to continue running some wires here. Um, up here I'm going to have a tank monitor to check my... Uh, my gray tank down here for the sink and also my two fresh water tanks so to run that basically I'm just gonna run power up here I'm gonna run 14 gauge power for the for that monitor because it's gonna run the pump and also the uh, tank monitors so for the tank monitors you could really go with a real light gauge like maybe an 18 or maybe even a 20 gauge, but I'm just gonna run 16 because that's what I got. I've got some of this marine shielded uh, 16 gauge. I love this stuff. It's actually better than the black stuff that I've been using. It's nice and soft, even in the cold, it's really flexible. So I like that part. So I'm gonna be running um, one line to each tank, uh, two wires, and that's gonna be running my, for monitoring the levels. So we'll talk about that in a different episode, I think, about how those tank monitors work. Back here, you can see I've got this tube here. That's just a two and a half inch uh, ABS tube, PVC, I guess it is. And I've got my plumbing running through there for my tank and also all my wires. So right now I'm just gonna uh, tidy up my wires a little bit, run uh, a few more things. I think I'm gonna have to put another hole here because I've got a lot more wires to run through here. But we'll see. So just trucking along here. I've uh, put a stain on the counter. And I've put a couple coats of urethane just to seal it. I'm going to need an another couple coats. I've got my control panel here now in place. It's just propped up obviously because I was uh, finishing the urethane. Um, there's all my switches up top there in my dimmer. Anyways, we can go through that later, some later point. All my electrical, I'm running it down in here. Anything that's not in sheeted, uh, sheathed, anything that's not in sheathed uh, wiring. I run it in uh, conduit, flexible conduit there. And then basically all the, those wires are just going through here, around and back okay, here. So the goal today is to get the wiring done, finish that up, and then to start on the paint. Uh, we're leaving for Arizona, New Mexico, Utah in three weeks. So this is really crunch time now. <laughs> yeah, just putting the steps in here. I don't know if you recall, I had to get this specially bent for the cargo trailer door because it was it was down about an inch. But now with the sill of the RV door, it fills in that. So I had to cut, grind, and re-weld this together. So it's looking pretty good now. Get that bolted on, and then I'll have my steps right here. Okay, so I'm just weighing the trailer right now. So I've got it all loaded up. I've got my stairs in here. I've got my propane tanks on the front, diesel tanks full. I've got this packed full of my stuff just like I normally would. I really wanted it to be as realistic as possible. And I even loaded a little bit of extra weight in the front just to, to simulate that. So now what I'm gonna do is I've got a weigh scale here. It's for weighing parcels, but this one's good up to 660 pounds, I believe just this Amazon scale and I've got it all set up with the jack and then this here right now is loose and now let's lower it on there and see, let's what, see what the tongue weight is so there we go so really close 450 I'd say 450 pounds so that's a fairly heavy tongue for a little truck you know this little truck that I'm pulling with 450 pounds is a lot I might have to go down to just one propane tank up here and again that's because I've shifted the axle back you know I've gone back a foot here anyways let's weigh now the sides we're gonna weigh the back of the trailer here's our setup for measuring the side so you can see on the steel tubing I got three marks so this is two feet from the weight to where my scale is, and then a foot this way. So what this means is whatever this weighs, I times it by three, and that gives me the actual weight of this thing, because it's a fulcrum. I've got a jack stand under here, just in case, and I also have the hitch connected to the truck, and the truck's in part. It's pretty solid, it's not gonna move around much, 
but it'll give me a good chance to weigh. And I went as close to the springs as I can because I want this point right here, the weight of this. So let's see what it weighs now. Oh, and I don't have any water in the tanks or anything. I'd like to just try it dry first off, just to see what I'm looking at here. This scale weight um, zeroes itself out for whatever weight is on the scale. So right now I've got this, it's pretty thick tubing, all this stacks of wood and stuff, but it's zero. So we're starting from zero. Okay, let's see what we got here. So, it's kind of hard to see for you probably, 288. So 288 pounds here. Again, this is pretty, like, I mean, it's w over this distance, over that distance, a little wider than right on this point. That point there is a chunk of metal also, so it's spread the load a little bit, but this is giving us a rough idea. So 300 pounds times three, that's what this side weighs, empty. So let's go check the other side. I just wanted to mention too, just to make sure that everything's level. So your nose of the trailer is level with the back and also side to side, because you don't want any weight shifting. So everything is perfectly level right now. Okay, same setup on this side. Got our marks, weight, scale. So on this side, we've got 363. So the other side, if you remember, is like 288. So that makes sense because on this side, I've got all the batteries. So I got those four six volt heavy batteries and um, the stoves on this side, the wood stove. So that makes sense. Okay, so let's do some simple math here and figure this out. So here's my math. So I've got 430 pounds on the tongue on each side. So the, the right side, 365 times three, that's 1,095. Plus I've got my 30 gallon water tank. It's sitting right here. So that's another 250 pounds if it's full. This is my spare tank here. So I normally don't run with this full, but just in case it's full, let's calculate it. Cause I'm trying to figure out my springs here. So 1345 on this side, when it's full everything's running on this side here I've got um, two eight we got 288 times 3 864 so plus I've got my 20 gallon water tank 166 pounds and that will be full 99 percent of the time so that's uh, 1030 pounds so these two here is what I'll be running with you know 90% of the time and then just if I want to do an extended trip would be this extra weight so that's pretty close these th these two here so it seems to be the way that I built my bench uh, my sink and my countertop and everything here it counteracts my stove over here and the batteries but this is a little bit concerning this is higher than I would l have liked I was really hoping this would be around you know high threes <laughs> high threes I think my issue here is a few things one I've got two propane tanks the only thing that I'm running propane for is my hot water heater my little on-demand hot water heater and my stove I think that's a little bit overkill honestly I I never fill up the one it's just kind of like a backup so I think I probably should just run one propane tank and then maybe if I do bring the other one just have it as like empty. The rack that's on the front I built very very strong and super heavy so I'm not sure if maybe that's a little bit too heavy or what I might do is come out with a box that goes all the way across here get like one of those uh, uh, tongue boxes that are just flat big long box or build one maybe and then have in here my propane and all my stuff that's up on top of that box, just put it down inside there. But anyways, it's still workable. My uh, truck hitch weight is 450. And what I'll be doing is anytime I travel, I only travel with one. I take the, swap the propane tanks on my barbecue, it's usually empty. And so I usually got one empty propane tank and one full. 
So then this weight is probably, yeah, right around 400 pounds. So that's uh, my weight. This is good because I'm just trying to figure out my springs right now. I'm going to get uh, an axle that's longer, a little bit wider so for my wider tires. And that axle, they just told me it's it's ready to go. But I was thinking I might just put in some new springs too. So with this weight here, even with this heavier weight, I think I could go 1,500 pound springs on either side rather than 1,750, you know, that normal 3,500 pound axle comes with. So that's what I think I'm going to go is 1,500 pound. I'm going to try and get the longest springs possible. And unfortunately, it's going to mean that I got to re-weld my mounts, but it is what it is. Okay, let's keep going here. Okay, new springs and axle going in. You can see here I was using wheel spacers to be able to fit my bigger wheels. And that I want to get rid of. I think it's put too much pressure on my bearings. So I custom ordered this axle and here. It's, it's also an easy grease one, which is good. So easy lube. Done here, I've got my stabilizer jacks installed. These are 25 inch ones, so the longest ones you can buy. That reaches the bottom. Got some mud flaps on here. Didn't want to get this all hammered up with rocks and ice and stuff. And then I just finished the electrical for the brakes. You can see the, the wires running up in there. But it looks pretty good. There's nothing hanging down at all under there. I love not having tanks underneath this thing. I was really debating putting a tank in here. I'm so glad I didn't. And have it all up, up inside. So let me just show you my plumbing. So this is what the end setup is. So you can see I've got my drain tube coming from my sink down to this tank. And then the drain out of the tank. This is the vent for the tank so that the drain and also the overflow. I put it on the opposite side of the shutoff. Like let's say I got this shut off. This tank fills up too much. It'll still drain off through here. I also did my water line in flexible tubing just to try and keep down the noise, but it's still really, really noisy. Put a clean out in the top of this tank so I can clean it out. Obviously, me my gray water tank, I'd like to get in there and clean that out once in a while. I'm also debating, I'm going to put a T in here, I think, run it to a shut off valve and then just run it through the floor so I can just go straight through the floor when I want to. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to build a, a, a shelf in here that's removable so that I can, when I want to clean that tank. And these are my water tanks. So that's the water tank in there. I just put a, built like a box, a cover around it. This is my selector. So I've got my right and my left tank. You can pick my tanks there. My little pump, I put it on these little feet. They're right rubber isolating feet just to help a little bit with the noise. But honestly, most of the noise is just coming right from this pump. So there's not much I can do to fix that. I also put an expansion tank in there to help buffer the noise a little bit. And then I've got my second tank. You can see the water line coming through here, around this back tube, and then down the side here, down here, and then right to here. So this is my, my second water tank. So that would be on the passenger side. And that's how I plumb that one. Again, I try to slope all the lines so that when I open it up and blow them out, it'll drain all the water out of the lines and then I just have to worry about um, winterizing the tanks. So most of my electrical is done now. You can see I've got a little propane sensor down there. Uh, it's a good idea. Some I've seen some people mount these up high, but propane's heavy, so it drops to the ground. So you want to mount your propane sensor as low as possible to the ground. All my electrical is done now. It's all wired in here. My main disconnect, disconnect from my solar. Got my solar controller on the back. My charger, 110 volt. I'm gonna run probably 110 volt just out to the, to the face of this somewhere. So now the job today is I wanna finish building these cupboards. So I'm gonna put the shelf in put uh, the supports in and then put the face, the door fronts on it. And then same here and there. Okay, so there's our first shelf. And again, it just pops up. I want to pop it out, clean out that tank. Okay, so I got my doors on here. Uh, this is a little door here for so I can access that valve for my gray water tank, the drain valve. 
I'm just putting in my table now, like the collapsible table. This is a kit. It comes with two legs, it's black, and it comes with these little feet. It comes with a little base. These are plastic, which I was kind of disappointed in, but it seems like they'll still be strong enough. So I'm just centering that, trying to give it enough room here. I'm gonna have to cut down my table a little bit because uh, just getting through between here and the table and then this countertop too and the table. But that's pretty straightforward. Here's a little kit that's kind of neat that I bought off of Etsy and it's someone 3D prints them. What it is is for these table legs. Uh, basically it allows you to store them underneath the table. So you just put those things on underneath the table and then you can just slide the table leg into it, snap it up underneath the table for when the table's in the bed position. So that's kind of a neat little thing. We'll see how they work. Got my cupboards up here built. They're just open face right now. I'm not too sure what we're going to do with it, whether I'm going to run some paracord or maybe some doors after, but we'll see. Hey, eh? we'll, we're going to just try it this time and then see how we like what we think about it. So how I'm going to do this to line it up, like I've got it center on the floor, but to do he it here is a little bit harder. So what I thought is on the bottom of my table, I'm just going to run a center line right down the table. And then I can line up these screws like those two there on that center line. That'll make sure it's center this one. Same with that one. And then I'll just have the table back wherever I want. I think I'm just going to have it just spaced just a little bit away from the window, but pretty close to that window. So then if something rolls, it's not going to roll right off and down. I'm just mounting the stove down here solid. And so what I did is I just scribed inside these and then just pilot drilled it. Just move the stove to the side a little bit because I mean it's still, you can move it back and forth. And now I'm just going to drill it. I'm going to use quarter inch bolts. These little uh, hex heads almost fit perfectly in those feet and it locks it in so you don't even have to hold it while you tighten up the bottom. I'm going to use lock nuts on the bottom and then have it all nice and solid in there. Okay, we're just getting to the fancy bits now. So I've got this piece of stainless over top of my cabinet there. Although honestly I can almost hold this and it's not even uh, hot to the touch. Like I could hold it without burning my hand. So it doesn't get that hot. So now I've got the stainless trim ring up top and that's just going to slide in here. Up top I cut it just so that it'll fit in there just like that. And then uh, throw the other one. You can see I put the insulation. This is fire rated insulation up here. It's actually almost like a fire brick that would go in a wood stove. So that goes in here and then I'm going to just uh, seal it up with some high temp caulking. Here's our finished product. So I sealed around the pipe and then around the outside of the insulation and then a few of the seams where it cracked. I had to put a little more that high temp caulking in there. So that'll keep any of the warm air hitting the cold air, hopefully. I don't want any condensation happening out here. Especially when this thing's not in use, right? When it's when it's running, it's okay. But when I got my diesel heater, so it's nice and warm in here, but cold out there, it wouldn't be good. So here's the cap that's been put on the stove pipe here. And that's about how high it is. It's about the same height as the vent over here and then this is just goes on top of it so i'll put this inside and so far it's been pretty good it draws pretty good you can see i've just been burning really really junky wood and look at how coked up that is so i'll clean that a little bit before i put it away that's from burning plywood so it's got glue in it and everything anyways i cleaned out the pipe put the cap on and now we're ready for our trip I'm just pressurizing the water system right now, checking for any leaks. So I just checked my tank down there. I had it full go full open water and I had my drain open and it drains way faster than it fills. So that's good. I could just leave that open and that'll act like uh, as if it was just draining out the floor. Close it if I'm in a parking lot or something. I had a little leak here. This one right here was leaking. So to seal it, I just used some of that high temp uh, PTF 
sealant. It's basically liquid Teflon, but it's for high temperature. And I I don't know if you can see my system here, how I've got it run. I'm running drain hoses so I can drain it so it doesn't freeze. Especially up here, what happens is the cold air comes in here and it freezes the coil that's in here. So you need to make it so that uh, it drains all the water out. Otherwise, you'll just go through these. I went through one of these already because of that. You can see the, the gate in there to close. And it's open right now because I've been running it. So it's good. I've, I've run it for probably five minutes, just flat open. And it's developing not enough heat to do anything, which is nice. Not burning anything. But what I'm doing too, what I'm doing too is I've got this fan here. It's a little computer fan. And so when I take a shower, I we close this boat hatch here. Seals that up. And then close this door here. Turn that fan on and it pressurizes this cabinet. And then it pushes out the exhaust out the, the vent there. This tube, eventually what I'm going to do is hook up a little pump in here and I'm going to drop a little um, pickup down into here and then I'm basically going to have a sealed shower unit too and I'm just going to pump it back to my grey water tank there. I've put all the pipes in place and the electrical is all in place but that'll be a future project. We're really rushing right now. I'm trying to, we're leaving on Sunday. Right now it's Tuesday and we're heading down to New Mexico Colorado so it's not really the best way to do it rush through a trailer build and then take off before you've really tested it but seems to be the way I'm doing it so just been running all my propane what I did too is um, I just as when I reassembled it I do a soap test on all the lines so you just spray it with soapy water and then you'll see if it, there's any leaks it'll start bubbling and that'll tell you you know for up here for down there but again I also do have my propane detector down here just bolted down my stove my wood stove is all bolted down now and that's, that's it. it painted Paint. my cabinets at the back there I think we're just gonna leave them open for now till we figure out what we're doing I installed that table like I showed you so that's all ready to go there I've got my cushions made they're in the basement so I'm gonna bring those out I'm gonna basically fill it uh, fill the water tank and do a tongue weight test on it like I did one in the middle of my build just as I was going along but now with it fully done table installed uh, cushions in here water tank full and then we'll weigh my tongue to see what I'm at so here's my drain for my sink it's basically this little thing here's a, a p-trap the the water level kind of sits just above this tube so not until it fills does it drain it's just a single tube all the way down into my tank see right there it's coming into the tank this here's the vent for my tank as I explained before so pretty simple setup no vent tube or anything installed here I don't need it I ran it uh, even with the sink full and then draining the sink it drains fine it gurgles a bit but it'll work for what we're doing here okay so i got my same little setup as before my 660 pound scale little amazon 50 dollars scale and then i'm going to put this block on here and then plug it in and it'll zero out with that weight on there so it compensates for the weight you're going to start with and then i'm going to take this and stand it upright right underneath the tongue here and lower the tongue down onto the scale right now we got no water in any of the tanks so we'll measure it that way first then i'll fill up the rear tank and then I'll... so there we go that's with no water in any of the tanks we're at 386 pounds up here okay so now let's put some water in the rear tank and see what happens so that's it with my left tank completely full now i'm going to fill my right tank and see what it does okay there we go so that's with both tanks full but no propane tanks on, on the tongue. Okay, so let's get inside and wrap this up.
Hey everyone, that's it. So we're going to wrap up this video. We are taking off, like we're in Ontario, Canada right now, and we're taking off down to Arizona, maybe into California a little bit with this trailer in a couple days. So I know it's not quite all done, but it's really, really close. The rest of it I can kind of work as we go. I'll try and do a nice tour video in a little bit of the trailer once it's done and, and everything's in its right place. But thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Also stay tuned for some adventures with this trailer.